Seth Joyner now Ray Diddy, 50% of the desk is gone. Um, I want to know some of your replacements you want. You would see Seth Joyner. And I guess Ray Diddy. But I don't well, think let me ask you for, Ray Diddy. Let me ask let me ask you a question first, because I've done okay. enough talking for the first 10 minutes here. Um did you like the did, did you like Seth on the no. post game show? I thought he just yelled at me the whole time. He kind of scared me. Like the Eagles could be three and one and they, and they would lose like to, you know, the Buccaneers. And it would be like, well, these guys are just soft ass pussies who can't tackle and who are jumping off sides and have no discipline. It just, it doesn't resonate yeah. with, with me. It doesn't resonate with, I think people my age and stuff. Not everyone can yeah. be a pussy when you're getting, you know, run into like a car crash, a uh, hundred plays a game. Um, I, I think Ray Diddy's, irreplaceable so like don't even try to do it i think they should just go in a completely different way i think they should make the desk three um you know say what you want about mike mike's always been nice to me he's held a couple shirts up on air of mine and stuff so i kind of have i guess a sauce bite for bar ken but, oh. you, know, you see him on the Phillies post game sometime and it's just this fake outrage live you know uh hat tip uh bob wankel you know the outrage yeah, is the got, outrage yeah we've got like, some uh stories yeah we've got uh, bob and i have some bar can stories that maybe we can share on a future episode or something but i i think i think there's enough like to actually answer the question that you asked, I think there's enough former players floating around that would do a pretty good job. Uh, Coach Gary's here in the comments. He's got uh, he spelled Brian Westbrook wrote Westbrook wrong. He wrote Brain Westbrook. He's dyslexic, so it happens. <laughs> but um, Mine's that, yeah, but I, you could do you could do like a you know when I was doing the um, charity game the other day, like Jason Avon was down there. I think Jason Avon would be, would be good on that for sure. I agree. Trey Thomas, I you know did the uh, morning show. At uh, yeah. Fanatic, and he did some WIP too. Like I think Trey could probably do it. Um, that'd be two former Eagles offensive linemen on the show with Barrett, with Barrett staying there. You know, so Rube. you'd have you'd have Bark and Rube. Yeah, I think Rube would be really good. But you know, again, like what is his responsibility at like the post game press conference? You know, like is he gonna have to Z leave the link and walk over to the studio? You know, but there's two of them, so I feel like Zangaro could take some of that and whatnot. But I, really, I just want to see Rube because I miss the Daily News live days. Like I wasn't really like. In on that, so I always I missed all the Spud and and Rube back and forth. So like, get Rube on there, get Spuds on there, and whenever tr whenever <laughs> Spuds is trying to carry the water for the Eagles organization, just have yeah. Rube yeah. put him over his knee, spank him, and put him in his place like he did maybe all get, the time. Yeah, maybe we get Dave to pull that up and we can play the media. But uh, yeah, that was one of my favorite. He told him, "Why don't you uh, why don't you shut up and I can keep talking?" Or what did he say? Why don't you just shut it up was it was like, yeah? Why, why don't you show us like you're talking? And then it was uh, it was all over like Josh Huff and his hollow point bullets or something like that. Like I, the guy's uh, yeah. like a four string wide receiver driving over the Ben Franklin, getting pulled over, and here's they're the, going at each other's throats. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, here's here's the thing. So say you did okay. So say you have Barkan kind of running the show. Um, Ed Randell's not. We'll say he's not involved anymore, right? <laughs> we didn't even mention the gov. So say it's Barkan Barrett, and then say like maybe they can make like a Rube work or something like that. And then you did like a Jason Avon or a or a or a Trey or like a um, whoever else is around. I don't know. Pick a pick another guy who's around like um, you know Hall or something like that. But so you'd have two former players. You'd have a respected writer, and then you'd have Barkan like. I don't. I don't think that's a horrible. Oh yeah, can we? Can we? <laughs> this, this is old school. This is uh, 2016. This is OG crossing broad right here, where Kyle just wrote like two sentences and then just dropped in a bunch of clips or whatever. Um, yeah, it was the Josh Huff situation, <laughs> and that's how you make 25 million people. Twenty and folks, if you want to see how you make 25 million dollars, right? One yeah. paragraph, three videos. Um, T T from the 203 is on the comments um, here. He's, I got he says one Brandon Boykin. He says Brandon Boykin and Malcolm Jenkins. Isn't Jenkins still playing though? Brandon Boykin. <laughs> yeah, Brandon Jenkins Boykin. Retired. What are you, you Cataldi? <laughs> he had like one good one good year. Let me just get Brandon Brooks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. Brandon, Brandon Boykin Brooks. was supposed to be the nickel corner that we that we yeah. uh that we that we uh, needed to shore up the defense. I got one for you. D gun. Bring him back. <laughs> Why did they ever get rid of him in the first place is what I want to know. It's in, in, in all of the decisions that they've made and NBC sports Philadelphia's made a lot of terrible personnel decisions over the year, not just them, but all sports media in this city over the last 10 years, not a hot take at all. NBC sports Philadelphia moving on from D gun was the dumbest, dumbest move of them all. Yeah. Why, why would you ever do that? <laughs> It makes no sense. Unless there's like a big money money thing behind the scenes that none of us knew about. I, I get it, but that that is inconceivable to me that like a like you would 
willfully move on from somebody like Gunner, you know? When when players actually come out and defend a media person for getting fired, that's when you know he has an insane amount of pull in that locker room. That's when you know you fucked up. Yeah. Like when the players are coming out and saying, yeah, what is this all about? <laughs> um, I got one I more. I got one more for you. Yeah. Give me Baldy. Give me a Baldy breakdown of Baldy? him just sweating over yeah. blocking assignments. I was watching him yesterday on NFL Network, man. That guy can – I'll watch blocking videos. That's the only time I'll ever watch a blocking video is if he's breaking it down. Can I let you in on a secret? We do – you know, after every Eagles game, Baldy goes on Twitter and uh, he does his breakdowns, right, mm-hmm. where he just films the TV, which is the best part about it. Best part. But uh, we just throw those up on the site because, like, I think he has a lot of good knowledge to share or whatever, right? And I think it's, like, good for readers or whatever, and I learned something too. Those posts do amazingly well. Yes, they do. Like a lot of people click on those because it's like just Baldy telling it how it is, you know, and like yeah. he learns something every time. But I mean, he'd be perfect for that, you know. I don't know if he he comes up with the blocking schemes himself, but he if they if it's his if it's if it's his names for the blocking schemes, he is one of the most creative individuals, and he should actually be doing more like naming different like podcasts or naming different yeah. like businesses that are coming out because he will yeah. always like come up with this awesome like blocking scheme. And it, and it helps when it's the Eagles because so many times they pull Jason Kelsey or they pull Jordan Mailata out. Yeah. And so they're just taking on this poor cornerback and just burying him into the Oh, back. I know. Baldy, get, I, I want to be as excited about something as Baldy is about like a good like downfield, like second level block or like a wham block or like Jason Kelsey getting out in space. Yeah. Oh. He's like he's he's horny for good blocking on most things. <laughs> Just sweating all <laughs> over his his laptop. <laughs> oh man! Anyone? Oh, I got uh, one more. Jaworski. Jaws. Jaworski stood the, he stood he stood yeah. the test of time on ESPN. So Jaws, you can do Jaws. You could do you know like a Trey or like an Avant Rube. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know which of these guys are under contract with other. You know, I don't know if Ike being like, for example, being full time with Odyssey precludes him from doing uh, NBC Sports Philadelphia. I mean, in the past, like there was always a bunch of crossover between those two uh, stations. You know, I mean, like you know, even like Ruben Frank would go anchor on, um, you know, WIP, but he'd do, he'd write and do his stuff yeah. on uh, do like quick, like quick slants or whatever. You know, so I, I don't. I think that can always be worked out too. The other thing I meant I forgot to mention about Golik too is that both of them are doing that DraftKings thing. If Odyssey really wanted them to do to replace Angelo full time, they make that work. You oh know? Hell yeah. Yeah, because I think Golik Senior is doing like once a week podcast for DraftKings. I think Junior is doing either once a week or a couple times a week. I don't think it's like a huge thing where it would be like, hey, can I – I can't do this other thing at the same time. So I really want to get this ironed out so I don't – so I can stop bullshitting my way around it. You 